Man, it's nice to see the room full today. It is Baptism Sunday. Somebody give it up for King Jesus. That's right, that's right. We're so glad you're here, um, and we're going to wind this uh, little short series of collection of conversations uh, about baptism. It ends today, and I hope it's been a blessing to you. I hope that maybe, uh, maybe those of you who are on the fence and the Holy Spirit's like, tugging on, tugging on, maybe today is the day for you. Amen? Amen. Maybe today's the day for you. But I, I, I want to end this. We've sort of asked the question of what is it, right? We've, we've answered that. Last week, we sort, of, uh, uh, we sort of went through the whole process of how and how it matches up. And we know that, that uh, you know, we have to hear it. And then it comes to confession and faith leads us to repentance. And then faith ultimately leads us to baptism. And today, I just want to quickly answer why, right? Why? How's it? Why, why, why do we do it, right? And so, um, have you noticed that we live in a, uh, a me-centered world? Is that a shocker to anybody, right? It, it, I don't think we're like, oh, I didn't know that, right? Uh, I, was, uh, I was having a cup of coffee the other day. I had ESPN on. It was morning, and I heard, uh, you know, all the all the talking heads that talk about pro football, and they were talking about these, these different receivers on different teams. Any, any NFL fans out there in the crowd today? Anybody? Oh, just like four of us, huh? Maybe we should say, who has a problem with lying? Anyway, I, I, I heard them talking, and, and, and several of these uh, receivers on these NFL teams were saying, hey, uh, I'm like 7-Eleven. I'm always open, Right? And so, and so they're having problems, even being on winning teams, they're having problems because they don't get to see the ball enough, right? And I was thinking to myself, oh, that's, that's me-centered, isn't it? I mean, forget about the team, right? Wipe the team off, off the map, but I don't get what I need enough. I was like, oh, that's, that's me-centered. And, and then I heard a, uh, I, I, was just, I was listening to a podcast, and, and, and this is all like in the same day, and, and I heard this, uh, I don't know his name, uh, they, they said his name, but I forgot it. Uh, but it was a, a, a Grammy-winning, uh, Dove-winning Christian artist that was walking away from the faith. And, and the reason was, is, is he said he just feels bad for other people, and maybe they picked the wrong God. He even used this, uh, this analogy of like having a case of, of water. Maybe you, Picture it like we have all like a case wrapped in plastic of water and, and, and different people reach in and they get themselves a bottle of water. And what if they just pick the wrong bottle? It has empathy for people that might have the wrong God. Me-centered, right? It's me-centered. It just felt like me-centered. And then, and then uh, uh, Jason and I were, uh, I saw this, this pastor talking on, uh, that was on the YouTube, and, and, they were, and she, was, she was preaching, and she said that she loves to reinterpret Scripture. It's like, okay, I got to hear this, right? I need to hear this. And, 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 and she said that, that, that Eve was right, that Eve was right to eat of the fruit because it made her wise, and it just proved that sometimes God lies, and I'm like, okay, that's a little me saying. She said, Scripture should never be offensive. <laughs> never? Ever, right? Um, it's me centered. It's me centered. And I, and I think that, uh, and it's not, like it's, it's not like it just got that way, right? Remember, uh, remember the story in, uh, is it Mark chapter 10, where, where, God, where Jesus is walking along and this, this rich young guy comes up and he says, Master, Rabbi, Teacher, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And, and Jesus says, look, homie, he doesn't say homie. Uh, but he says, look, uh, you know the commandments, right? You know the commandments, you keep them. He goes, well, I've done all those since birth. And then Jesus Hit him with the big one. Well, then sell all your stuff, give it to the poor, and come follow me. And he's like, um, uh, about that, right? That's a problem for me. It's not like it's new. But our, our world, I think, since the beginning of time, since creation, has been me-centered. It's been me-centric. And I don't know about you, but, but like... Jesus says, right, Jesus says, uh, John 14, 6, Jesus says, no one comes to the Father except 
through me. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and somebody finish it, and I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I think this, I think that in this me-centered universe that we live in, we want Jesus on our terms. Anybody feel me? We want Jesus on our terms. And we're like, okay, I'll take this much Jesus right here, but I ain't taking no more, right? Oh, no, that's, that's, way, that's way too uh, Bible thumping for me. No, no, I, I don't want that. I'll take this. It's like, a, it's like an a la carte menu. I want this. I want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. I definitely don't want that, right? But I'll take a little bit of this. We think that we can have Jesus on our terms. But when you talk about salvation, folks, listen to me, Christians, brothers and sisters, it's always been on Jesus' terms. Always. Always. He cares about you. He loves you. Right? And I, and I think I can firmly stand here on this platform and say there's a lot of things Jesus cares about, but I don't think he cares about your opinion on this matter. I just don't think he does. Right? And I think it's up to us to say, hey, when we put our faith in Christ, to say, yes, I think I want it that way. I think I want it the way that Jesus says. If you turn your Bibles, uh, we, we got it on the screen. If we have some old school folks in the house that's got the Bibles with them, that's wonderful. But we're going to be coming out of uh, Matthew chapter 3. Somebody say Matthew 3. Yeah. Matthew 3, we're going to be coming out of there. And, 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 and this is some really, really, really good stuff like the other stuff's not. This is, right? And so Matthew chapter 3, 13 through 17, here's what Matthew writes in his gospel. He says, then Jesus, somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. Now, I don't know about you, but I still can't figure out, right? I, I want to. Uh, I don't feel like the Holy Spirit's given it to me yet of why Jesus had to be baptized, right? But, but he did. He says he did, and he says, but John, but John tried to deter him, wouldn't you? Come on, it's okay. Wouldn't you be like, hey, hey Jesus, um, do you want me to baptize you? Uh, we got it wrong here. It's, it's backwards, right? But he said, but, but it says, but John tried to deter him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And yet you come to me. Let's move on here. Uh, Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented. John's like, all right, let's go, right? And as soon as he was baptized, he went up out of the water, and at that moment, heaven was opened, and he, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And then a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I am loved, and I am well pleased. And that is the third time in the, in the New Testament scriptures that God speaks in an audible voice. We probably ought to pay attention, shouldn't we? Anybody ever, third, anybody ever thought they heard God's voice? Like aloud? Because if you did, I'm, I'm really interested in hearing your story. We might call you a crazy person. Just, it's okay. You guys need to lighten up today. <laughs> well, you're, you're way too stiff. You, you need to lighten up. Do we need to stand and do some jumping jacks? You sure? Because we can do that. People say those crazy Christians are dancing. So God speaks and says, this is my son whom I, am, whom I love and whom I am well pleased. So the question is why? Why? Why baptism? But listen, I, we have to go back to, to Matthew um, chapter 3. Did I get that right on the slides? Do we have that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it right there. And so we gotta go back because we gotta, there, there's some foreshadowing that John the Baptist, anybody ever heard of John the Baptist? John the Baptist is the one who, who we just talked about, we just read that he baptized Jesus. But he, he does some foreshadowing uh, uh, just before the passage that we read and he says this in Matthew 3, 11 and 12. He says, I baptize you with water. This is John the Baptist speaking. He says, I baptize you with water for repentance. Somebody say repentance. 
Remember, remember last week we talked about it was, a, it was a recalculation. It was a reinterpreting your data and changing the way you think about your life and what you've done, right? And he, the, here's, what, here's what he says, and I want you to pay close attention to this. He says, but after me, I can, I'm baptizing you with the water of repentance is basically what he said. But he says, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I. And I want to ask you, who do you think that's going to be? You know what? This, this time, it is the Sunday school answer, right? It's Jesus, right? It's Jesus. He says, but after me comes one who, I am, who, who is more powerful than I, whose sandals, he says, I am not even worthy to carry. And then he says this, and I want you to pay close attention. He says, he will baptize you with what? The Holy Spirit and with fire. I don't have the fire figured out yet, Right? I don't have the fire figured out yet. And maybe, right, maybe that is the fire that burns inside of us when we are gifted with God's Holy Spirit. Maybe that's the fire that, that we feel that, 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 that changes our minds and changes our direction in the life we're living and, and all the things, the, the decisions we make on a daily basis. Maybe that's the fire. But I know what the Spirit feels like. Brothers and sisters, I know what the Spirit feels like. Sometimes, I, sometimes I, I wish he wasn't there, right? Anybody feel me? It's like, I just want to do this, right? I just want to do this thing. And the Spirit's like, hey, you know, hey, about that. About that. You, you think that's the best plan? You think you should do that? And the Spirit's like, yeah, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think that's what Jesus wants you to do. Sometimes I'm like, just go get a cup of coffee. Give me like 10 minutes. But he says, there's, coming one, there's one coming that is more powerful than I, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The Holy Spirit and with fire. And then we read in Romans 6, 4, as, as Paul is, is teaching uh, to the church in Rome, he says, he says what? He says, we were therefore buried with him through, somebody say it, baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Somebody act like you're in church and say amen, amen. right? We were buried with him in baptism, right? We were buried with him in baptism. And, and as we come out, just as Jesus was resurrected from the grave, we live a new life as well. Baptism, folks, listen to me. Baptism is the gospel. Baptism is the gospel. It is the gospel of Jesus. It's the death the burial and the resurrection of King Jesus. And, and some might say, but hey, hey, hold on, Pastor. Ephesians 6 says that we are saved by grace. And I would tell you today, man, I'm fired up, huh? Huh? Anybody feel it today? Anybody, anybody excited with me? Somebody say, Pastor, listen, we're saved by grace, brother. And I would say, yes, I agree. Listen up. But in grace is the gospel. In grace is the gospel. Listen, in some old, long before me, there's some old Southern Illinois preacher that had this, the grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. You feel me on that? God's riches at Christ's expense. That is grace. In grace is the gospel. Peter preached at Pentecost, Acts chapter two, and I don't even know if I have this up, but I'm just gonna read it to you. We looked at it last week, right? We looked at it last week, and, and, and all the people are there. It's Pentecost, and all these Jews are, are in Jerusalem from all the surrounding areas, and not, some of them don't even speak the same language. They speak a different dialect from where the region they're at, and they're all gathered for Pentecost, and Peter gets to preach. Peter, by the way, you think you have screwed your life up? 
beyond repair. Listen, Peter, the Peter that denied Jesus three times, how many? Three gets tapped by the Holy Spirit. Hey, bro, I need you to preach. Peter, there's hope, right? There's hope. And Peter preaches, and he preaches a great message. I mean, he goes deep. He goes all the way back to the, to the beginning, and he tells them who Jesus was, who Jesus is, why he had to come. And then he says, and you people put him on the cross. And they are, they are convicted by the Holy Spirit. They are convicted by the words that Peter is speaking to them, and they they, they say, well, brothers, if this is true, what shall we do? I didn't mean that to rhyme, but it does, right? What shall we do, brothers? And he says, listen, uh, 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 repent, repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Now listen, I want to be upfront with you. I believe. Listen, and, and, and if you disagree with me, it's okay. We can still be friends, right? But I believe that in the waters of baptism, it is the gospel of Jesus. It is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. And I believe that that's the place where we come in contact with the blood of Jesus. I believe that that that, that water symbolizes the blood and it it cleanses our life from the sin that used to be. And we we, we go down like a a tomb and we're we're raised back up. And I I believe, listen, listen to me. I'm trying to help you. I, I believe, I believe the Holy Spirit is offered as a gift in that place. Now, I don't know. I mean, people could say, well, what do you do with Cornelius when Peter goes to, to Cornelius' house, right? And the, and the Spirit, listen, I think it's implied. And we can argue and we can, we can debate. But I'm telling you as your pastor, if I get to teach and I have to speak where the Bible speaks and, and, and teach where the Bible teaches, I will teach baptism. And I'm mad at you. I'm mad at you. I'm mad at you. Listen, I'm telling you, if we can find Jesus uh, in the gospel, dead, right, buried and resurrected on the third day, we can get down, folks. But if I'm teaching, baptism is the gospel. And I want to share one last passage with you. This is so, so, so good. 1 Peter uh, chapter 3, 18 and uh, through 22, Peter is teaching here, and, and, and he says this. He says, for Christ also, also suffered once for sins. The righteous for the unrighteous. The righteous being Jesus, the unrighteous being you and me and mankind, humans. And he says, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God to redeem you back to God he was put to death in the body but made alive in the spirit after being made alive listen we're not going to we're not going to debate this this is like for another like 8 week series this next sentence right just so you know uh, right uh But he says, after being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits and to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. Now think about the ark. Everybody thinking about the ark? Say yes. Yes. We're thinking about the ark. Listen, he says, in it, in the ark was only a few people, eight in all. Eight is enough. Wait for it. Eight in all. We're saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but a pledge of a clear conscience. 
toward God. Let's move on here. It saves. Somebody say it saves. Somebody say it saves. Somebody, one more time, it saves. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with the angels, authorities, and the power in submission to him. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so listen, I I want you to, I'm going to leave you with this. Think about the flood. Think about what Noah says in scripture, that at that time, that every thought, every thought of men and women were evil, every single one of them. You think you're bad? I don't believe all your thoughts are evil. Noah says that every thought was evil in the sight of God. And God was, God was left with the decision, I need to do this. I need to cleanse the world of sin. And while the, and then it started raining, folks. Noah's been building an ark for 120 years. It's never rained. Can you imagine how they made fun of him? We make fun of somebody when they got a zit on their nose. What are you building there, Noah? A boat. Ha! A, what's a boat? It's going to rain. Uh, what's rain? You, you feel me? And so he's building this ark for 120 years, and then the storm clouds move in, and God sends water for 40 days and 40 nights, and the only people who are saved by this water are the people who are on the ark, just like you being in Jesus. And the same water, listen to me, the same water that rid the world of sin Because what happened to every person who didn't get on the ship? It's okay, you can say it. Yes, they drowned. The same water that cleansed the earth of sin is the same water that cleanses you of your sin. It's a big day. It's a big day, folks. Not just this day, it's a, big, it's a big time for the church every time we get to speak because we're ambassadors for Jesus. The Bible says that we speak on his behalf. And we're not self-centered. We're not me-centric. I felt bad at thinking about the words I said in the last two weeks. That I'm scared that nobody's going to get baptized. And I know God was like, who cares, Jason? I'm not here to make you feel good. We just got to speak the truth. Got to speak the truth. We got to do it gracefully. We got to do it gracefully. The fact is, today, there is no, I was thinking, I was thinking, how how are we going to, hey, just give me for, talk, talk amongst yourselves. Good to go, bro. All right. So, so I was, I was thinking. Uh, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine. He's, he's a pastor, and I was like, "How do I, how do I get this? I, what, what is the left hook? Because yeah, a pastor is always looking for the, the left hook at the end of the message. What is the thing that's going to bring it together?" And he's like, "Y'all got people getting baptized?" I'm like, "Yeah, we do." He said, "It's, it's awesome. I missed it completely." He said, "Why don't you just..." Let the baptism do the talk. I'm no stranger to emotions, so we'll see if I can get through this. I don't just get to baptize one of my kids. I get to baptize two of them. <laughs> this is my son, Carter. Hi, Carter. Hi. And Romans 10 tells us that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, and that we believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. So I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe that Jesus is Lord. And that God raised him from the dead. And God raised him from the dead. Because of your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're buried with Christ in his death. (laughs) 
same water. Peter was preaching, right? The same water. The same water that God sent for 40 days and 40 nights that, that rid the earth of sin and saved the eight on the ark is the same water that these beautiful people are getting baptized in today. Jesus says, if you confess me before man, I'll confess you before the Father. So I want you to repeat after me. I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe that Jesus is Lord. And that God raised him from the dead. And that God raised him from the dead. Because of your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're baptized with Christ in his, in his death and raised in the resurrection. Listen, I don't want to. I don't want to miss an opportunity here. And so we've for three weeks we've asked people, hey, who's who's been thinking about getting baptized? And, and we have two already. We have three more today. That that that. <laughs> but 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 I don't want to. I don't want to miss an opportunity. Listen, listen. Today's the day, folks. Listen, today is the day. I mean, if you haven't been buried in the waters of baptism, if you haven't been buried with the grace and the gospel of Jesus, right, today's the day for you. Uh, there's, no, there's no more waiting, right? There's no reason, right? There's, you're not by yourself now. Nobody's going to be looking at you. Well, they'll be looking at you, and it'll be awkward for a little bit, but you'll, you'll live. You'll live, and you'll live Forever, somebody say amen. Uh, yeah, and so, and so if, if, you, if you're thinking about it, if you thought about it, I, I, I'm praying, I'm begging you, don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. For the ones who we've, we've talked about already, uh, the three that's left, if you guys could make your way down front right now. I know, everybody give it up. Clap for him. Clap for him. Listen, it takes, it takes, just have to sit right here. It takes like tons of courage. Uh, who, who, who remembers when they got baptized, right? Remember, remember, that, remember that fight that was going on? Remember that fight that was going on inside you and like, I don't know, should I do this? Should I not? Who are they going to think of me? I'm crying. I don't know why I'm crying takes so much courage. And, and so, and it's a good day. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on the spot. Stand up with me. Just, we're gonna do this, we'll do this one at a time. By the way, this is Daisy. Hi. Say, hey, everybody. Hi, there you go. Um, I just want to ask you, I just repeat after me. I believe, I believe. that Jesus Christ, Christ is the Son of God. And I believe that God raised him from the dead. This is my friend Brenner. Say hi to everybody. There you go. There you go. So repeat after me. I believe that Jesus is God's son. And God raised him from the dead. There you go. This is Carly. Say hi to everybody. There you go. Um, and I'm going to ask you the same thing. I believe that Jesus is God's son, and God raised him from the dead. There you go. So, so these three young people, um, it's a great day for them. They are putting their faith in King Jesus Today And they're saying, right, uh, the, the, they're saying that their faith came through hearing and then and, and in faith took them to uh, repentance. And, and they know that I, I'm lost. I need Jesus. And, and they've confessed that Jesus is king. And so, folks, we're going to do what the only, the only thing we can do because faith is now leading them uh, uh, to water that's going to save them. If there's anybody else... Listen, we won't stop until we're done. 
We won't stop until we're done. And we might even get into your lunch. And then we'll have to really repent, won't we? So what we're going to do is, uh, I think, uh, yes, he's like, don't get into my lunch. after me. I believe believe that Jesus Christ Christ is God's son son. and God raised him from the dead. Brenner, because of your confession that Jesus Christ is Lord and you put your faith in him today, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit because you are being buried with, with, with Christ in his death and you will rise to a new life. She's not supposed to be walking on this leg. But God's going to take care of that. So Daisy, go ahead and put your hand up on that kiss. Daisy, because you have made your confession of King Jesus, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, being baptized with Jesus at his death and raised to a new life. to him. Now we're family. And so, Carly, because of your good confession of who Jesus is, that he is God's son, that God raised him from the dead, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You're being baptized into Jesus' death and raised to a new life. Christ is Lord and he is God's son that God raised him from the dead I'm going to now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit baptized into his death and raised to a new life 